A very good morning to you and welcome to the Morning Outlook Report. I'm Rachel Jones reporting live from Calkine TV Sydney Studios. Now the Australian share market is set to open lower this morning. Over in the US, the Nasdaq fell overnight and the S&P 500 edged higher. Iron ore continues to take a downward slide. Yesterday, the Australian share market recovered in the final 30 minutes of the session, pushing the market higher for a second day. The ASX 200 rose by 18.6 points, or 0.25 percent firmer, to 7,425.2. While it faded from yesterday morning's high, it still shook off a fifth straight week lead from Wall Street. Well, the Aussie market is down by 1.5 percent so far this month. Keep in mind that the bourse rose by 1.9 percent in August and has just had its longest monthly winning streak since the 1940s. Concerns of a slowdown in the global economy and over 80 companies trading ex-dividend in nine days have been a wait. Seven billion shares changed hands on Monday, and that was worth $7.6 billion. 700 stocks rose, 727 fell, 418 finished unchanged. Now, over in company news from this morning, Appen has completed the acquisition of Quadrant Global. Now, Quadrant is a Singapore-based global leader in mobile location and point of interest data. This acquisition opens new growth opportunities in the global location intelligence market. And Resap Health, a leading digital health company developing smartphone applications for the diagnosis and management of respiratory disease, has announced it's received approval from Oz Industry for its application for an advanced and overseas finding in respect to expenditure associated with its COVID-19 clinical studies. Now, over in the U.S., Resap is recruiting participants in a pilot study to collect data to train an algorithm to identify COVID-19 through cough sounds recorded on a smartphone. Now, yesterday, Sydney Airport shares rose by 4.6% after receiving a sweetened $8.75 per share takeover bid yesterday. That was from Sydney Aviation Alliance. The consortium, led by IFM, most recently made an $8.45 per share bid, following a lower $8.25 offer. Now, the airport has granted suitors an initial four-week period of due diligence. Aristocrat Leisure ran out of steam yesterday but still finished 2.9% higher. A major broker raised its forecast for their share price over the next 12 months. The timing of the news coincided with the lift in the poker machine game makers' shares. The ACCC turned down the idea of a proposed alliance between Qantas and Japan Airlines that was intended for coordinating flights between Australia and Japan. The reason is that combined pre-pandemic, they were accounting for 85% of flights between both nations. And the ACCC deems it a likely alliance that would reduce competition. Shares in Qantas fell by 0.2%. Now, today, let's take a look at the company's going ex-dividend. We have the Tassel Group, Telecom, TPG, News Corp, the Inghams Group, Mercury New Zealand, the Ive Group, and the Bevel Group are all set to trade ex-dividend. Now, the, although over 30 companies will trade ex-dividend this week, none are large enough to significantly hold the market back. Over the past fortnight, both BHP and Fortescue Metals weighed on the ASX, and that was due to the size of their dividend payments. Now, in IPO news, Legacy Minerals shares fell by 10% on its ASX debut on Monday. The company explores for gold and copper deposits. So now it's time for a very short break, but stay tuned to Calkine TV for more market updates. Hi there, James Preston for Calkine TV. Are you into gaming and virtual reality? Does AI and the endless possibilities it entails capture your interest? Or are you constantly trawling through the web to try and discover the latest updates and innovations in the tech space? Well, let us do the work for you. From the latest product launches 
to shocking affairs on the World Wide Web, exclusive interviews and information about the top companies like Apple and Google to brand new tech startups vying for your attention. Kalkine's Tech Beat has the latest in what matters in the world of technology. Join me every single Thursday on The Tech Beat, exclusive to Kalkine TV. Welcome back. You're watching the Morning Outlook Report. In economic news this week, highlights are likely to include a speech by the Reserve Bank boss, Philip Lowe. Also, a handful of economic updates in China is out tomorrow in the highly anticipated August employment report. Now, this report is likely to show the impact of recent lockdowns and what they have had on job losses in Australia. CBA economists consider it possible that around 300,000 jobs were lost in August, mainly due to the New South Wales lockdown. The impact of Victoria's lockdown will come later and will probably show up most in next month's report. Also, there'll be an NAB Business Confidence Survey and a weekly survey of consumer sentiment. They'll both receive attention. In the U.S. economic data, the federal budget was in deficit by $170.6 billion in August. Consumer inflation expectations stood at 5.2% for the month. U.S. share markets were mixed on Monday with energy companies leading gains as OPEC predicted stronger demand for crude oil. That meant Marathon Oil, APA Corp and Occidental Petroleum shares all climbed. Shares of vaccine makers Moderna and Pfizer sank. Now, this was after experts said COVID-19 booster shots were not widely needed. Market participants are also likely focused on the passage of U.S. President Joe Biden's $3.5 trillion U.S. budget package, which is expected to include a proposed corporate tax rate hike to 26.5%. European share markets advanced yesterday. The pan-European stock 600 index rose by 0.3% with oil and gas stocks, adding 2.8% to lead the gains. Shares of French-American oil and gas company Technip FMC climbed 6.9% to lead the stock's 600 index after agreeing to sell a stake in spin-off firm Technip Energies. The German DAX and the UK FTSE indexes both rose by 0.6%. London listed shares in Rio Tinto and BHP both lifted 0.4%. The Dow Jones index rose by 262 points or 0.8%. And the S&P 500 index added 10 points or 0.2%, both snapping a five-day losing streak. But the Nasdaq index lost 10 points or 0.1%. Longer dated U.S. Treasury yields dipped yesterday. U.S. 10-year yields fell by one point to near 1.33 percent. And U.S. two-year yields were steady at 0.215 percent. Major currencies were firmer against the U.S. dollar in European and U.S. trade. And the Aussie dollar lifted from lows near 73.42 U.S. cents to highs of 73.75 U.S. cents. And at the close was at 73.70 cents. Global oil prices climbed to six-week highs yesterday as investors track the slow restoration of supplies in the U.S. Gulf of Mexico. And tropical storm Nicholas threatened to further disrupt the energy industry in Texas. The Brent crude price rose by 59 U.S. cents or 0.8 percent to $73.51 a barrel. And the U.S. Nimex crude price added 73 cents or 1 percent to $70.45 a barrel. Base metal prices decreased yesterday. Meanwhile, aluminium prices touched 3,000 US dollars a ton for the first time since 2008. And that was before pairing gains. Nickel fell by 3.3% with copper 1.4% lower. The gold futures price rose by $2.30 an ounce or 0.1% to $1,794.40 an ounce. Spot Gold was trading near 1,793 US dollars an ounce at the US close, and iron ore shed $6.15 a ton, or 4.8%, to $122.60 a ton. That was as investors assessed expectations that curbs on Chinese steel output are set to intensify. Well, that's all for your Morning Outlook report here on Kalkine TV. Have a great day trading and stay tuned for more market updates and economic news live throughout the day. This is Rachel signing off for now.